Hello, Jennifer Howell here from the Sarnia Lambton Jumpstart Committee as your moderator for tonight's Teen Transition Fair, Navigating Services. Here's tonight's schedule on the topics that will be discussed and the community partners presenting. After everyone has presented under a specific topic, there will be a question and answer period. You can type your questions in the chat box or the comment section below. If we run out of time and your question has not been answered, we will be sure to forward your question to the appropriate agency so you can receive the an your answer at a later date. Any additional questions that are thought of after the event, you can forward them to our Facebook page by searching Jumpstart Committee Sarnia or email us at jumpstartcommittee at gmail.com. We will start a pre presentation tonight with our keynote speaker, Beth George Watson from Developmental Services Ontario. Hi everyone, hopefully you can hear me. My name is Beth George Watson and I work for Developmental Services Ontario here in the Sarnia Lambton office for the Southwest region. So the key functions of DSO agencies are to provide information, whether in person, now COVID's put a real damper on that, but uh, on the telephone mostly now by email, provincial website, or by community presentations such as this one. So that's considered to be service navigation, is getting that information out to people and trying to connect people or direct them in the right direction for services. We confirm eligibility, we do assessments of support needs, we link people to adult developmental services and supports. It's important to note that the DSO does not hold any funding or deliver direct services or supports. The Southwest region in which we are is a very, very big region. So if we think about beginning the application process or the intake process, the DSO can confirm an individual's psychological eligibility any time after 16 years of age. The intake and application process began closer to 18 at 17 and a half years old. People wishing to apply for adult developmental services and supports can contact the DSO. This can be the applicant, a caregiver, or a representative with consent. Tanya Sangerman is our intake coordinator for Sarnia Lambton. She can reach, be reached by phone or email. And Tanya collects basic information. Once Tanya has completed the intake, she will request eligibility documentation or confirmation of developmental disability. So the documentation required to confirm eligibility is a psychological assessment or report signed by a psychologist or psychological associate that states the person has a developmental disability in accordance with the supports and services to, to promote the social inclusion of adults with developmental disabilities act. Verification of age and residency. So what is the eligibility criteria? It's significant limitations in cognitive and adaptive functioning prior to age 18. Cognitive functioning is the ability to reason, organize, plan, make judgments, and identify consequences. So that's basically given in an, in an IQ score. The adaptive functioning is reading, writing, math, money skills, social skills, practical skills such as work skills, getting around, taking care of health and safety, following schedules, and age of onset, limitations must have been present before the age of 18 during the developmental years. Once eligibility is confirmed, a copy of the DSO eligibility letter, letter can be used as part of the ODSP application process. The financial needs form still must be completed, but the medical portion does not have to be completed with the DSO eligibility letter given. And that is a big time saver for families. The application request is assigned to an assessor service navigator and the application process begins. We do assessment of support needs. So we're legislated to use the DSO application package as the provincially consistent method to assess the support needs of applicants eligible for ministry funded adult developmental services and supports. So that same application package is used across the province. The application pa package consists of the application for developmental services and supports or the ADSS, the supports intensity scale or the CISA, 
The application for developmental services and supports, or the ADSS, is completed by a trained certified assessor, ideally two to four respondents who have known the applicant for a minimum of three months across a variety of settings participate in the process. The average meeting time is one and a half to two and a half hours. And just so you know, this is the time that we really talk about service navigation. So we find out the likes and dislikes, and then we try and um, let people know about services that are out there and try and get them that information so that they can connect. Since COVID-19, all assessments have been completed virtually. The ADSS, it consists of seven sections. So the intake process, about the individual, getting to know you. So we found out about goals, dreams, important two and four, the services and supports, and that includes service requests. And we here in the Sarnia office have created a frequently called community phone list number for people with developmental disabilities. So that's a specific list that is used to help families or give them information about services and supports that are out there. We talk about additional medical and behavioral support needs, care concerns, unpaid primary care can, caregiver concerns, and then we do this supports intensity scale. These are done in two separate meetings, or the CSA. It's a standardized assessment tool designed to measure the pattern and intensity of supports a person with a developmental disability requires to live successfully in their community. And we're always looking at success. We look at exceptional medical and behavioral support needs, community living, home living, lifelong learning, employment, health and safety, social, protection and advocacy. And this again is completed by a, a trained certified assessor, ideally two to four respondents who have known the applicant for a minimum of three months across a variety of settings participate in the process. The average meeting time is appro approximately three hours and that meeting is done virtually as well. And if needed, the meeting can be meetings can be broken into smaller meeting times by having two to three meetings, whatever works for the family. The assessor summary report or the ASR is prepared by the assessor following the completion of both the ADSS and the CSA. The ASR is a document that summarizes the information collected uses, using both the ADSS and CSA, and it provides a snapshot in time of that person's support needs. It's used in the Southwest region when considering applicants for available resources. So if after you've had that um, application package completed and there's significant changes in circumstances, they should be reported to the DSO assessor. So for example, if any significant medical or behavioral changes in the applicant's support needs and or changes have occurred in unpaid primary caregiver concerns, um, let us know, and if a reassessment is deemed necessary and appropriate, a new ADSS and CSA will be completed. So agencies that require a DSO referral are St. Francis Advocates, Community Living Sarnia Lambton for some things, Christian Horizons, Lambton County Developmental Services for some things, Goodwill, only for community Goodwill connections. So services and supports funded by the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services. So those things that are funded by the ministry are residential support, so group living, host family, supported independent living, community participation supports, social recreational activities, the passport program, caregiver respite, person directed planning, specialized supports such as regional support associates behavior supports, adult protective service worker, so we'll talk a little bit about residential supports just to give you a quick overview. So group home supports, it's a type of residential accommodation that has overnight support. There can be a range in the number of people who live in these settings, anywhere from two people to 10 people. On average, it's anywhere, you know, five and less. Host family, this type of residential support has one to two people as the main caregivers. Usually the person supported will have more independent living skills and attend day activities or they're able to stay at home alone during the day. Supported independent living. This type of residential support has approximately two hours of support per day. The person lives on their own and the support comes to them as needed. The type of support that is provided is geared to what the person needs help with. So it could be anywhere from grocery shopping to medical appointments, cooking, budgeting, taking medication. And an important thing to note is that this type of person who lives in a cell uh, needs no overnight support and they need minimal support. 
So community participation supports. So that's social, social recreational programs. They try to provide meaningful activities and community involvement. And below are examples of some social, social recreational programs. So Goodwill Connections is a social recreational based activity program. Wawanosh, they're no longer production oriented. They're more social recreational based activities and they have a lower staff ratio. Community Skills Development, so that's the CSD program out in Petrolia with Lambton County Developmental Services. They have social recreational based activities, the activity in with community living in Sarnia. They have social recreational based activities with a slightly higher staff ratio. Stepping Stones is also um, a community participation support program. It's a foundations initiative that assists young adults with a developmental disability to make the trans transition from the education system into the community. This is the, a goal oriented program that will help a person up to five years. So I've been asked to cover you know, the pa passport program and what it will cover. So I'm just going to quickly do an overview of it. So what Passport will cover is community participation and activities of daily living. It will cover programs, classes, and supports that help develop independence, social, social and life skills. So for example, literacy classes, cooking classes, managing money, computer skills, assistance with personal care needs. That includes fees and, serve, and supplies. It includes It'll cover participation in a community activity or event such as recreation, club memberships, gym memberships, admission to festivals and museums and sports. It covers pre-employment and employment support, so skills training, resume development, and job coaching. It covers transportation for exact activities, so transit, mileage, taxis. It can help cover uh, paying for a support worker to help with community participation and daily living activities. This includes a support worker's expenses while providing support. So for example, meals, transportation, and activity fees for accompanying the individual during outings. It will also cover caregiver respite. So caregiver respite is temporary help to help to provide a break to primary caregivers. This can be during the day, evening, or weekend, and can be in home or out of home. Respite includes supervising or providing supports for individuals with daily living activities, such as personal care, while caregivers get a temporary break. It covers person-directed planning. So passport funding will cover up to $2,500 to be used to help develop a person-directed plan that builds the individual strengths and interests and it identifies supports to help them achieve their goals. These supports can be purchased from the independent planners, facilitators, or de developmental service agencies. It will cover administration costs. It can, agencies can charge up to 10% to manage a person's passport funding. If an agency helps administer support, they can pay for costs up front, so staffing, uh, the cost of the activity, and then the agency gets reimbursed. If the family administers passport, the family has to pay for expenses, then submit the paperwork to be, in re to be reimbursed. So it's just a matter of personal preference, really. So we'll talk about what it does not cover. So it won't cover housing and home maintenance. So rent, home renovations or modifications, housekeeping, household items and electronics. So for example, furniture, appliances or computers. It won't cover indirect respite services and supports. So example, cleaning, meal preparation, snow removal, care of other family members. It doesn't cover holiday travel, so personal or family vacations. It doesn't cover telephone or telecommunications, so home phones, internet service, cell phone service. It doesn't cover groceries, food, and restaurant meals. Uh, it also doesn't cover clothing and personal goods and services, so toiletries, spa treatments, aesthetic and cosmetic services. It does not cover dental care and services. It doesn't cover fees for therapies or specialized services, so for example, speech and language, um, therapy, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, nursing, or massage therapy. It doesn't cover assistive devices and specialized equipment. It does not, not cover services already received through the Ontario Disability Support Program, so drug benefits or medical aids. 
It does not cover tuition for post-secondary programs, which can be paid for by government assistant programs, such as the Ontario Student Assistance Program, or OSAPT, or supports that are available through an on-campus accessibility office. It doesn't cover vehicle purchases and or modifications, leases or rentals. And just to note, in exceptional cases, and we, in being in COVID-19 restrictions right now, we are in exceptional cases. The passport, or exceptional circumstances, the passport agency may allow expenses that are not normally covered under the program. So I didn't go over that just because we don't know how long these um, extraordinary allowances will be made. Um, so I just wanted to cover what's typically covered and not covered. If we think about caregiver respite, so Community Living Sarnia Lambton is the agency that covers that in this area. Respite Care is a family support service that provides temporary relief from the physical and emotional demands involved in caring for a family member with a developmental and or physical disability. Overnight support is offered as well as day activities such as transit training, cooking, and a variety of, a variety of different other different activities. So it's important to note too that COVID has restricted some of these activities. So currently they don't have overnight supports and some of their um, training that like the transit training is not present but they do have three days a week of uh, respite with limited hours person directed planning it can be used to develop a person directed plan that builds on the individual strengths and interests and identifies sports to help them achieve their goals we have had um, one allotment of person directed planning that was probably about eight years ago but we still do keep the wait list for that if we think about specialized and professional services, we have advocacy planning, support worker. So through Family Counseling Center, DSO does the referral. The APSW provides counseling, advocacy, and case management assistance for individuals with a developmental disability who live independently. We also have regional support associates. So they do behavior intervention. DSO does the referral for this. Using a biopsychosocial model of assessment, RSA clinicians assist in determining the possible causes of challenging behavior. So behavior is oftentimes a person's only source of communication, so they must systematically rule out other potential causes. So is it pain? Is it medical issues, environmental, environmental issues, relationship issues? So once RSA learns more about the person and the possible causes of challenging behavior, RSA can create a plan for the person and the people who support them to help that person be happier and more satisfied with their life. So part of what we do is matching and linking of available resources. So developmental service agencies report available resources to DSO. The matching process then begins. We start with the highest priority and also the best fit for the reported resource. We forward the application package information to the service agencies for consideration of that person. The agency and the person must both agree to service and support. It's important to note that any services through DSO are voluntary. So nobody can make them access or accept service. Community services that do not require a DSO referral. Um, if we think about ODSP, the Ontario Disability Support Program, you don't need a referral through DSO for that. To qualify for ODSP income support, you must be at least 18 years of age, be an Ontario resident, be in, in financial need, and meet the program's defi definition of a person with a disability or be a member of a prescribed class. So it could be a physical disability, it could be um, a mental health issue or concern. Um, so those are just a couple of the things and as well as a developmental disability. So it's important to note that if you're under 18, you can start that application process up to six months before your 18th birthday. Agencies that don't require a DSO referral to get services are Autism Ontario, the March of Dimes, Canadian Mental Health Association, respite through Lambton County Developmental Services. They fundraise and hold their own wait lists for respite and Saturday recreation. And that's host family respite included in that respite above and Pathways Health Center for Children. Employment, you don't need a referral through the DSO. We've got lots of uh, 
programs there, as you can see, we've got employment transitions and job path, summer employment transitions, the workplace group, Goodwill Career Center, Lambton College Community Employment Services, Leeds Employment Services, Employment Support Program, that assists persons who have disabilities to obtain and maintain employment. So you could call your ODSP worker for more details. Education, we've got Lambton College, the Lambton College Community Integration Through Cooperative Education or the CICE program. We've got Literacy Lambton, Math Tutors Plus, and we've got uh, some of those agencies talking later, so that will be great. We've got extracurricular activities as well. So COVID-19, as you all know, has greatly impacted these activities. So please call ahead just to make sure, you know, what the restrictions are and if they're still operating. So there's bowling or iron eagles, which is weightlifting, Special Olympics, swimming, basketballs, ringette style, floor hockey, um, and they've grown greatly in the last five years and it's awesome to see that and we've got a representative I believe talking later about them. There's monthly dances pre-COVID and hopefully after COVID. There are many other activities that are available. Many are listed on the frequently called community phone numbers for people with developmental disabilities handout. So and for additional information We'll make sure that um, through, uh, I believe, Facebook or the Jumpstart uh, website, you can get the passport fact sheet and the frequently called community phone numbers for people with a developmental dis disability list. Um, so you can get a hard copy or you can look at it virtually. Our office at DSO is located at 400, 420 East Street North, Suite 14. The office is closed to having people in at this time, but we are still working, you know, uh, with video or uh, we'll take emails, telephone calls, absolutely. So I've put down our intake coordinator, her contact information, her name's Tanya Sangerman, so I've put her email address down there and her phone number, and I've got my contact information down there as well. Is there any questions? And just know if I don't, I think we're doing okay for time. Um, but if I don't get to your question, feel free to contact me via email or telephone. And if there's any questions, I am certainly open to hearing them. And thank you guys for your time. And hopefully you'll get lots of great information from the other speakers who are going to present later. I think it's a great lineup of agencies and people who are going to give you information. So any questions? Wanted to say thank you, Beth. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, the, we did have a little bit of a problem with the sharing piece of your PowerPoint, but I was just wondering if families, um, would it be possible for families to get a copy of that if they were to email us that they could have that PowerPoint presentation just to go through? Absolutely. Absolutely. My apologies on that. I, I didn't realize oh. it wasn't coming through. No, I no, it, but a lot of information, so thank you for that. So for families, if you would like a copy of um, the PowerPoint presentation, get a hold of us through Facebook, which just search Jumpstart Committee Sarnia, or email us at jumpstartcommittee at gmail.com, and then we can forward that to you. So are there any questions? Jen, there is one question in the comments for Beth. So the question is, if your child is almost 20 and is already on ODSP, do you need to be connected with Developmental Services Ontario? Well, it's a good idea if you, you know, if he's looking for any type of support or uh, even that passport funding. So that minimum amount is $5,000 to help get your son or daughter involved out in the community and it's really good I think to think about the future so what is your son or daughter's goals like what would you like to have them have happen in their life are they meeting their goals is there employment that could be helpful for them would you like to have them have more social or recreational opportunities you know is it in the future where you think about residential supports because to be honest with you our residential wait list is our longer wait longest wait list that we have and uh, you know 
we really encourage people and families to think and plan ahead and try and get people on wait lists and be more pro proactive instead of reactive um, because it's really hard to um, plan in a crisis. So I always encourage families to please reach out and you know, see if there's anything that we can connect you with, whether it's a funded service to get you on the wait list for that or to connect with some of these great agencies that are going to come and talk after me. So absolutely, please get in contact and, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be good for, for your son or daughter. Are there any more questions, Shelby? There was another comment that came through, um, but I believe it is questioning the services out there or how to connect. So the comment is, my son very much wants to figure out how to live independently. He does need some supervision though. What social and recreational resources are available for him right now? And I believe she's trying to ask what resources are out there to help him to live independently um, with some supervision. Okay, so if we think about passport funding too, it's a very good program in the sense that if there are specific goals that you want to have your son work towards, so let's say for example, learning how to do laundry, learning how to take the bus, learning how to cook, those can be skills that you can hire a worker to help teach them how to do those activities. So absolutely, those are, are, you know, the passport program is great for that. And we, when we think about um, regular programming, you know, after COVID, I know that um, we've got Community Living, their respite program, they offered acti um, activities such as cooking classes, um, they did bus um, training, how to take the bus. Um, we've got programs as well, such as, and I know Goodwill, Connections will will speak later, but they they really um, try and um, meet people's goals as do stepping stones um, to work on those activities, those everyday life activities to to gain those skills to give them that independence to uh, live on their own one day. Great, thank you, Beth. Shelby, is there any more? There seems to be all the questions for now. Thank you, Beth. Okay. Great, thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of the presenters. I, they have great information to share. Thank you so much.